Hi everyone, welcome to my Facebook Live this week. My name's Mandy Witherby and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. Thank you all for joining me today. While I'm just waiting for everyone to jump on, I'll just call up this live on my iPad as I do every week so that I can see all of your comments. So just give me a moment while I get that set up. And... Okay, great. So as you're jumping on, say hi so that I know that you're here. And um, yeah, I've got a few exciting new things to share with you today. Hi, Glenda, how are you today? Hi, Sharon, I'm great, thank you. How are you? I'm on school holidays, so I am fantastic. <laughs> uh, how are you today? Are you working today or are you um, at home? Ah, <laughs> yes, Glenda beat you just by a split second, Sharon. All good. Doesn't matter who was here first. The fact is that you're both here, so that is awesome. Hopefully we'll have um, some more join us as time goes on as well. I am running a few minutes late today. Um, I was still playing with the uh, design for today, for our creative time. So... Hello, Tina Marie. Great to see you. How are you today? So yes, I was just playing with the um, last few things of my design for today. So I wanted to make sure that I had that organized before I went live. Oh, you've been waiting for a while. I'm sorry, Glenda. How late was I? I was under five minutes late. So that's not too bad. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, so let me know um, what how your weekend was. What did you get up to on the weekend? Hi, Tracy. Great to see you. Thank you for joining me today. I received a few more um, birthday cards throughout the week last week as well. So I'm going to share those with you all in a moment. Hi, Sharon. How are you today? How's the weather over there today? We've got a nice sunny day today, although I haven't poked my nose out the door, so I'm not sure how warm it is today. But um, it's nice and sunny anyway, so that's a good thing. So what did everyone get up to on the weekend? Let me know, let me know. So Saturday I had... Ah, oh, that's awesome, Tina Marie. Your weekend was spent making cards. I love to hear that. That is very exciting. You had... Oh, you had vertigo on the weekend, Sharon. That's no good. And you had a bad headache from that too. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. That's no good at all. Hi, Tracy. Great to see you today. How are you? Oh, that's no good. So is vertigo something that you suffer with often, Sharon? Or was it just like a one-off, weird, bizarre thing? Um, I know a fair bit about vertigo. We've got vertigo in this household. <laughs> I actually had it every day for 25 years. And then one day it just went away and then my daughter had developed it in the meantime. So now she deals with that every day. And um, it's terrible. Oh, you're great. Good, Tracy. That's awesome. How's the new baby going? I've been meaning to ask you, actually. Oh, you had rain over there in New Zealand yesterday, Sharon. Good, yes. Rainy days are always good days for crafting, aren't they? Definitely. And you've got sunshine today. Awesome. Yeah, Tina Marie has had a bit of vertigo as well. Um, it's not a fun thing to have to live with. And Glenda gets vertigo as well. Wow, a lot of us suffer with that, hey? Oh, it was your first time ever having it, Sharon? Oh, yes. Well, it is um, the first time you experience it. It is really terrible. It's terrible any time that you experience it, but especially the first time when you're not used to it. Um, yeah, it can make you feel really, really unwell. So my, I rarely get it now, thankfully. Um, every so often, I might get one or two attacks a year now which um, is much better than having it daily for 25 years which was pretty awful but you kind of learn to to manage it although it's not nice but um thankfully when i was 
having it daily I didn't get nausea with it although now if I get a really really bad one I do so it's horrible it's a horrible thing um, ah, a few difficulties trying to get trying to get her back to her birth weight but Hannah is coping very well oh that's awesome that's good to hear oh be praying for that little one that she um she gains her birth weight because she must be I'm trying to think how old she is now she must be a few weeks old now is she <laughs> yes Tina Marie it's the vertigo support group right here <laughs> right here right right now <laughs> uh, you've been experiencing dizziness for a few months and then it hit you very bad at work on Friday oh no yes some medications can work really well for some people but it depends too on the type of vertigo that you have there are different types of vertigo um, and the different types of vertigo uh, can be treated in different ways some types can't be treated um, I had the non-treatable type and my daughter has the non-treatable type though she's tried about seven or eight I think it is different medications and none of them worked and she's had all the testing under a um oh what do you call him now you know the head doctor uh neurologist neurologist yeah i think that's the one and so many ologists in my life and her life <laughs> it's hard to remember which one's which <laughs> um yes and unfortunately she had the non-treatable kind so she's had to learn how to um deal with it and manage her symptoms so I'm, I hope that the medication works for you, Sharon, for the type that you have. Yeah, the nausea is horrible. Yeah. And it won't stop, will it? Because that room just keeps spinning and it's awful. Yeah. Oh, she's six weeks tomorrow. Oh, my goodness. That has gone so quick, Tracy. Oh, we've still got a card here for her too. We have to try and um, drop that off. Hopefully this week while I'm off on holidays, we can just pop it in the letterbox for them. Um, and I need to message you about that too because I need to get their address. I don't know that I don't know that I have their address. Maybe I do. I'll have to check that. Neurologist, that's the one, Tina Marie. Thank you. Yes, there are different types of vertigo, Sharon. So some are... Um, so my daughter has vestibular migraine so she doesn't it's closely linked to migraine it's in the same family as migraine but she doesn't get a headache she just gets the the vertigo where the room will spin uh, which is what i used to have as well um, but there's another type of vertigo as well that is to do with crystals in your ears and if the crystals become dislodged and they go into the incorrect part in your ear it can actually cause vertigo and there are positional things that you can do to um, maneuver them back to the correct um, yeah, yes it, we, we are really the support group the vertigo support group today <laughs> um, yeah so there's maneuvers that you can do to um, get those crystals back to where they belong that settles the vertigo but to determine what type of vertigo um, often you have to see a new neurologist and go through a battery of tests uh, to determine what type of vertigo that you have which is what my daughter and I did so um, Ah, you have the crystals type yes yes and unfortunately the crystals type often happens when we get older so the crystals uh, the issues with the crystals is uh, off, typically not when you're younger it's often when you get older that you can develop that type of vertigo so but that one is a treatable one so that's good so that's really good Oh, you're on first name basis with Greg's neurologist, Tina. I bet you are. Yeah, lots of visits. Hey, yeah. All right. Um, so you should, I'll find out, Sharon, remind me um, to ask Brooke because, of course, she looked into, she's been suffering it now since she was 16 and she's now 25, turning 26 this year. So she's had it almost 10 years as well. Um, every day so she's got to be careful about going up ladders and heights and things like that tilting her head back can set hers off um, all sorts of things like that so she's got to be very careful in her work and she has her dive certificate but she's no longer allowed to dive because we found out from her neurologist that if she dives and she gets a um, dizzy spell or an episode of vertigo while she's diving she could actually drown so <laughs> because you lose your orientation 
and so she may not know which way is up back to the surface and things like that so she's not allowed to dive anymore so thankfully in her job she doesn't need to dive um, it would be desirable that she could but she doesn't need to so um, so that's good but yes remind me to find out about the um, crystals maneuver because I can't remember what it's called there's a specific um, name for it and you can go to a physiotherapist I think to have it done or you can actually do certain maneuvers at home which she has which she tried initially before she had her diagnosis but hers was a different type so it didn't work for her but there are videos online um, so not saying I, I shouldn't be saying that I am promoting those things but they are things that you can investigate to see if that might be right for you um, and for the the type that you have um, I'm certainly not a doctor and I'm not a specialist in these things. This has just come from personal um, personal experience, um, but it might not be right for everybody. So certainly do not take my word for that. <laughs> so just check out what is right for you and your condition, of course. Yes. Um, yes so remind me all right so let's we've got a few on here now so let's um move on um from the medical science world to the crafting world so i received some beautiful um birthday cards which um as most of you will know i celebrated my 50th birthday last monday so yes i've joined the club now apparently <laughs> so everyone keeps telling me um i don't know which club that is the oldies club i think <laughs> So anyway, um, yes, yeah, so I received a lot of beautiful handmade cards and I showed most of them on my live last week, but I received a few um, after my birthday uh, because of the mail issue that we're having at the moment. The mail has been quite delayed and um, yeah, anyway, so I will show you some of these beautiful cards that I received. So this one I received, so I have two special Sharon friends and they're both on here today and they're both Stampin' Up! demonstrators as well and so I received this gorgeous one from one of my special Sharon friends and this is from Sharon in New Zealand, Sharon Martin. So isn't this just gorgeous? Very very beautiful, so pretty. I love the, um, the pop of pink in the center of each of the little blue flowers as well so that's really beautiful. Thank you Sharon. And then my other Sharon friend, who is a demonstrator also in Sydney, um, this is Sharon Hammond, and she has made this gorgeous card, which is a little fun fold card, and opens like this. I won't open it all the way because it's got my personal greeting inside, but yeah, it opens like that. And then, wait, I'm doing it at the wrong angle. Yeah, and then that part closes and that part closes over like that. So isn't that cool? I really love that fun fold. So I think I'll have to um, try out that fun fold. I think that's one that I don't remember ever doing that. I don't think I've done that one before. Then I received two beautiful paper toll cards. So um, some of my, my friends do paper toll. And one of them is one of my team members, actually. She's been doing paper toll for many years. So now she's a Stampin' Up! demonstrator as well. Um, but she still loves her paper toll. And so she made this beautiful paper toll card. And um, she has got gorgeous... This is from Chitska. So thank you very much, Chitska. This is beautiful. I already thanked her in person. But um, isn't that gorgeous? And you can see it's got multiple layers there and she shaped that all beautifully so many moons ago i did double in a little bit of paper toll with my card making um but chitska has got beautiful paper toll framed uh, really big ones too all around her house beautiful scenes that she has paper told um, and they're absolutely beautiful so she did a really great job and this one is from my sister-in-law judy who also did a paper toll card so isn't that beautiful so yeah, so I was, um, got two paper toll cards. So they were my, my four um, cards that arrived a little bit late, which was great because my birthday was extended over the entire week. So they're the best kinds of birthdays, aren't they? The extended birthdays. So that was pretty cool. And I also got some other cards and gifts from other staff members um, from my work as well, my, my daytime job. Um, from the preschool and so I got those on Tuesday and then Wednesday and then I got these cards you know gradually through the week so it was great my 
birthday went the entire week. So now I've had to come back down to reality and uh, my birthday is over now. How sad. <laughs> and all of the decorations are actually coming down tomorrow. So um, yes, that's been planned. Um, because the girls need John's help with some of that. As you would have seen some from my birthdays, we from my photos, we had a big, beautiful um, uh, frame with vines all intertwined. So that's a big, heavy um, wooden structure. So that they need Dad's help with that. So that'll be coming down tomorrow. Yes, I did. Yes, I, I did finally receive it, and I got some beautiful gifts as well. So thank you to everyone. Paper Toll. So Paper Toll is um, layering the same image on itself or portions of the same image on itself to give dimension. I'll show you up really close one day, Tina, when I see you. Um, I'll show you this these cards um, that have been given to me and I can explain to you what Paper Toll is. But it's dimensionalizing different parts of the actual image to give... Um, yeah, to give depth to your um, to your image. And we kind of do that with um, some of our paper crafting as well from time to time. And I probably don't do it enough now. I used to do a lot of it with my stamped images as well. And I would dimensionalize different portions and cut out different portions. I'm a bit lazy. Well, I wouldn't say I'm lazy now. I'm probably just, um, I try to do quicker projects because I'm more busy, I guess, now, so I have less time. But I used to do it with my stamped images as well. So you can certainly paper toll your um, your stamped images to give those different dimensions. Um, yeah, and it involves shaping as well and, and things like that. So it's really fun. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Chitska's on here as well. Yes, paper toll is 3D craft. Yes. Yes, I just showed your beautiful card, Chitska. Did you see me show that? I was telling everyone how beautiful it is and the beautiful paper toll work that you do and all of your beautiful framed um, paper toll that you have around your home as well. So it's like an art gallery when you go to Chitska's place. It's beautiful. So many beautiful um, paper tolls up around the, the room, uh, around the, um, the house. Yeah. Um... Okay, so we'll move on to some stamping news, some stamping up news. So we have at the moment, if you haven't already seen this online, and I've promoted it in my um, business page as well, but I'll, I'll keep reminding people about it as we go through the month. We have at the moment our bonus days um, promotion running at the moment. So what bonus days is from the 1st of July until the 31st of July. Is that right? Yes, 31st of July. Oh no, actually till the 3rd of August it is. Till the 3rd of August. Um, every time you shop with Stampin' Up or you purchase Stampin' Up products and shop in my online store, if you purchase $90 or for every $90 purchase that you make, or multiples of $90, you will receive a $9 coupon code. Sorry, I'm <laughs> frog in my throat. You'll receive a $9 coupon code. And then those $9 coupon codes, and you can save them up over the month, and then you can redeem them from the 4th of August. So um, that is very exciting. Now, the thing is, too, from... Um, yeah, so if you order... Um, say $90 worth of product, then you'll get one coupon code. If you order $180 worth of product, you'll get two coupon codes. And they will be emailed to you in your email that you've registered with Stampin' Up when you've gone into your online store. You know, you have your profile that you have set up there. Um, they will be emailed to that email address. And then those coupon codes, you use them um, and you will enter them into your order when you order from the 4th of August. Okay, now the exciting thing is that from the 4th of August, we have another new catalogue coming out. So we have our August to December mini catalogue coming out. So those coupon codes that you um, earn during this period, you can actually use them to, well, you can use them towards annual catalogue if you like, or the beginner brochure, but you can also use them towards brand new product from the holiday, uh, the, sorry, it used to be called the holiday catalogue. Now it's called the August to December mini catalogue. And 
you'll see you'll get a little sneak peek there from the cover um, of some of the beautiful products that are coming out so in this catalog there will be a, um, a lot of your Christmas or holidays uh, products as well as autumn um, Halloween if you celebrate Halloween and there's some beautiful beautiful projects now as Stampin Up demonstrators we have already been able to pre-order from this catalog um, as of this month so anybody joining now with Stampin Up can actually order um, from the pre-order as well so you can order these products now so if you want to if you don't want to wait until September uh, oh sorry until August the 4th of August let me get the dates right August yes because it used to be September but um, it's changed now to August um, if you want to get these now you can join my team and you can get some of these products in your starter kit so if you would like to know more information about that please let me know um, it's very exciting my order should be arriving sometime this week I hope um, depending on how all the, the deliveries are going with all the delivery issues that we've been having with Australia Post and everything during COVID. Um, COVID has got a lot to answer for, hasn't it? <laughs> it's caused havoc with so many things. Um, but anyway, yes, so to join my team, it's only $169, but you get to choose $235 worth of product. So you get that additional $66 worth of product for free Plus, you'll get free shipping um, on that order. And then from then on, you'll get 20% discount on all of your future crafting pro um, purchases. I was going to say projects. Purchases. <laughs> so that is really exciting. As part of my team, we have a great time together. Um, we share our projects together. I run little challenges each month um, and then a, a a winner is chosen at the beginning of the following month and they win a prize um, and we do all sorts of fun things I keep everyone up to date with all the Stampin' Up! news we get um, our hands on early or we get our hands on new product early oh my goodness I'm stumbling over my words today I don't know what's going on um, yeah so we get the option of do, um, all these wonderful things and we get to attend um, demonstrator only events and things like that all of which have been online this year but usually they are in person and they're a lot of fun and we learn a lot from them and um, the in-person ones we always get lots of freebies too which is fantastic they give us lots and lots of gifts and things they stampin up spoil us demonstrators um, really wonderfully I should say I shouldn't say terribly because it's not terrible at all it's really wonderful so if you would like more information about joining my team and getting all of these wonderful benefits as well as joining an awesome community of crafters that are as passionate about their paper craft as you are um, then please let me know and I'd love to have a chat with you about joining my team but yes remember this catalog is available um, to customers from the 4th of August or if you're a demonstrator right now now I have already um, ordered these for all of my current uh, customers so if you've ordered with me in the last six months I've already ordered these through Stampin Up to be sent directly to you um, oh, I meant to check the date that they were going to be sent out to customers and I forgot to do that before I came on live um, but it will be soon because us demonstrators have already got them so they'll be going out to customers very shortly so look out for that in your letterbox over the next couple of weeks all right so that is bonus days and the new catalog and i think that was all i had to tell you about today so we are ready to get on to our crafting project for today before i go any further does anybody have any questions for me um let me see oh hi rose great to see you you just jumped on i just caught you before i was about to flip the camera down great to see you how's the weather down south down in tassie is it it must be freezing down there by now i would think we're in the middle of winter i'm imagining it would be pretty chilly so um and madeline's here too hi madeline thank you for joining me today it's great to have you along okay so we will get ready um, to craft along um, today we're going to be using 
this very cute stamp set, Zany Zebras. I made a quick little card um, with my team on my team meeting on Saturday using this and it's so cute. I wanted to make another card. So I'm going to make another one a little bit different, but it's kind of a, a combo. So I will show you what we're going to be playing, uh, what else we're going to be playing with. But um, the Zany Zebras is so super cute. All right, so, oh, hey, Julie, great to see you. Thanks for jumping on today. Hi, Amanda, great to see you. Thanks for jumping on. All right, I'm just about to, oh, it's very cold down there at the moment, Rose, is it? Yes, I would imagine so. So I hope to um, one day when the whole coronavirus pandemic is over and things go back to some sort of normal, I hope to come down to Tasmania. So, but it won't be in the winter. It'll be in the warmer months for sure. I would not cope with the cold too well, I don't think. So um, yes, you have to let me know what is the best month? What's the best uh, weather? The, what is the best month for the best weather to travel down to Tasmania? Because it's on my bucket list. So I will get there one day. I've got a few of you down there to visit now. And I've got relatives down there as well. And I've never been there. So yeah. All right. So um, while you're typing that comment to me, Rose, about the best time to travel down there, I will cover up the camera and I'll flip it down to the desktop and we'll get ready to start crafting. So just give me a moment. Okay. Now we'll just get this all straightened up and ready. Oh, we are, where do we need to go? This way today. It's always different every time. <laughs> I seem to be putting my camera in a slightly different angle each time now too. Um, because, oh, it's because of my stand. My stand isn't quite um, at the right angle where it should be. So I'm just going to position this so that you can see my, um, my blog here and my host code for this month. I don't want to move that down too far. Okay, so a little bit more down and then we should be all good all right so if you are shopping with me um, then you can find my online store at my blog at mandy's papercraft creations.blogspot.com um, you will find there um, lots of creative inspiration as well as my online store um, up on the top left hand side there's also my joining tab which is next to my shopping tab I've got to uh, tab there for tutorials if you'd like to have a look at what tutorials I have for sale there um, and yes and if you are shopping with me be sure to use my um, host code for this month which is this one here so that um, I'll be able to send you a thank you gift uh, yeah, so be sure to use that when you are shopping with me. Now, I'm still not happy with the positioning of this. I'm still fiddling a little bit as I'm talking. Alrighty, so we are going to be using, as I said, the gorgeous Zany Zebras. So, so cute. So the Zany Zebras can be found in both the annual catalogue and the um, beginner brochure. But I just wanted to show you in the beginner brochure that... Here in the beginner brochure, um, it has the stamp set here, but it also has some sample projects here as well. As we have in all of our catalogues, we always have sample projects. Now, if you wanted to make the cards that you see here in these sample projects, it has here listed all of the products that you need in order to do that. Now, rather than enter each one of those um product codes you can just enter one code which is up here at the top it says zany zebra cards and it's got one code there 
it tells you the total price which is $101.75 so that would get you bonus days vouchers because you'd be over the $90 so you'd get a bonus you'd get one um, bonus days voucher for $9 that's Australian um, in each currency it will obviously be different but Australia it's $9 um, and then you get all of those products so you get the stamp set you'll get a block a D size block you'll get a packet of whisper white cardstock you'll get a memento ink pad which we're going to be using today you'll also get a set of um, watercolor pencils which is the watercolor pencils assortment 2 we have the original assortment and then we have assortment 2 and you'll get a packet of stamp and dimensionals so if you would like all of those products to put together some cards um, then you all you have to do is put in one code now I'm using I'm not using the watercolor pencils today but I am using some um, I'm using some designer series paper let me get it around the right way so I'm using the artistry blooms designer series paper um, and that is these gorgeous ones here now this packet is a sealed packet which I haven't opened yet because I've got a, an open packet with some cut papers already here so I'm not allowed to open my new one until I've used my pre-cut ones <laughs> that's the rule so I'll show you these I'll move that aside and these are absolutely gorgeous so you get um, 12 sheets in the pack and they're all double-sided I think I'm missing one here one two three four five there should be six Maybe I am going to have to open up that new packet. Yes, there should be six. I'm missing one. I must have already used one of them. But they've got really, really fun patterns. Oh, hi, Megan. How are you? Great to see you here today. Um, hi, Jenny. How are you going? Great to see you. Yes, I am well, thank you. And it started to rain there. Um, and now it's sunny. Oh, good. Good. it's great when the sun comes out is there any rainbows because if it's already been raining and now the sun's coming out maybe there's a rainbow somewhere um, after Christmas can be a nice time to travel to Tasmania awesome but they say we can have four seasons in one day down here oh okay so <laughs> so I'm kind of going to be um, picking I might get four seasons in one day no matter when I come Rose is that right but after Christmas sounds like a great idea. That's usually when I'm on my annual leave as well. So I am opening up my new packet, everybody, because we are missing one of the patterns here. Now I have to work out which one it is. So we've got two of that. So you get two sheets of each one. Two of that one. I've got that one. Two of that one. Ah, here. Is it this one? Yes, this is the one we're missing. This one. How gorgeous is that? That's the one we're missing from my pre-cut pieces. And that one. Oh, yeah, that's the other side of that. Okay, I think that's right. Let me check. Yes, that's the one. All right. So these are the ones that I have already cut. But, yes, they do come in 12 by 12 pieces. I've just cut mine. I've already cut mine in um, 6 by 12 and then this one I've cut down even further because I've been using these. Yes, aren't they pretty, Megan? They're so gorgeous. Oh, I'm glad that you're well, Megan. Yes, I am as well, thank you. Although I'm having trouble with my eyes being a little bit blurry, but I've made an appointment with my optometrist next week. I think I might be needing new glasses, so <laughs> I'm sure it's nothing major, but um, all good. And then let me flip these over for you to show you the other side. Here we go. Here's the other side of all of these beautiful papers. So lots and lots of fun designs and one, two, three, four, five. Oh, we've lost our little short piece. Where did he go? Where are you, little one? Hang on a minute. Oh, I put it on top. There it is. There's the other one. Let's pop that one in there. So yeah, lots of fun colours and patterns happening on this one. So these are the papers we're going to be using in our project today. Hi Jenny, great to see you. How are you? We've got two Jennies on here now today. So they are the papers that we are using today. Um, but as I was saying, 
with the with those products here if you wanted all of those products and instead of the pencils you swapped that out for the designer series paper which let me check the price on the designer series paper i think it's 20 dollars, but let me just double check i'm going to my punches dsp there we go um doo -doo -doo. yes it's 20 dollars. so that would still come in over the 90 dollars to still get you the um, bonus days coupon which you can then spend um, when you like but yes the other products in here i will be using today so i'll be using the stamp set i'll be using a d block i'll be using some whisper white cardstock i am using some other colors of cardstock as well um, i'll be using the tuxedo black and i'll be using the dimensionals so that's just a little um, idea for you if you're interested in that and if you love what you see me making today. Uh, now in the annual catalogue, I'll just find what page the Zany Zebras are on for you if you just wanted to have a look at them on their own. And there's probably also, let me just have a look, Zany Zebras, page 104. See what other sample cards are in here with the Zany Zebras. I mean, I have looked at them before, but... I just couldn't remember. Oh, there you go. So there's another another couple of um, projects in there using the Zany Zebras, but it's on page 104, um, which is uh, this section here in the catalog is actually for um, new stampers. But even if you're a seasoned stamper, you can still use these stamp sets and make great cards with them. And I have seen some awesome projects with these um these stamp sets and then i think on i'm just trying to think yeah these so these two here are in the beginner brochure as well um this one here as well as in this beginner brochure there's some other products as well that are not in this catalog in the annual catalog so they're exclusives just for um for that one if you don't already have a stampin up demonstrator and you are in australia um, and you would like any of these catalogs if you don't already have them please get in contact with me because i would love to send them out to you um, and you might just be wondering about my spiral binding here i get that done at our local stationers um, the catalog doesn't actually come with a spiral binding <laughs> i get that done myself because i just find it's easier to open up the pages and then if i want to i can just flick my book over like that if I want to just look at the single page so yeah this makes it easier for me <laughs> all right um so I'm missing a couple yes it is Megan yes so the zany zebras is in both the beginner brochure and the annual catalog um you thought you'd seen this one made on a circle yes I did one the other day Jenny um which I posted I did on Saturday with my team, I did a really quick and easy um, card using the zebras. Um, and I just used a sketch. Um, I find sketches are fantastic for ideas, especially if you lose your mojo and you're not sure um, where to start with a stamp set or where to start with any creativity. Um, if you look up sketches on Pinterest, the Pinterest, I always tell everyone, Pinterest will be your best friend, especially if you're new to crafting or you've lost your mojo or I think it's, I think it's, well, I wouldn't say it's my best friend, but it's one of my best friends. <laughs> I'm on Pinterest all the time, pinning my projects, other people's projects. I get lots and lots of ideas on there and I post my projects too so that I can give other people ideas as well. But um, yes, so in my team, we've got a sketch challenge running for this month. And so I made a quick and um, simple little card using this stamp set. And this is the one that I made on Saturday in my team meeting with the cute little zebra there. And this was just a sketch layout that um, I got off Pinterest. And I used some of that gorgeous rainbow um, paper again, the rainbow glimmer paper I'd used last week on my Facebook Live. So I'm using this as an idea but I'm also remember the card that I made last week remember this one I made last week I'm using this as an idea as well so I'm combining the two ideas today to put together um, the card that I have got planned for you so let's get on with that 
and I love I just love this rainbow paper isn't that just so beautiful it's gorgeous ah your wish list is too long now Amanda <laughs> love it well it's great that you joined stampin up because now you can get all those things on your wish list at the discount so that that's the beauty of being part of stampin up <laughs> oh definitely jenny jump on pinterest yes definitely use pinterest i'm always telling my team please use pinterest jump on there get your ideas all right, so I've got my little zebras. I've got one already mounted up, the first one I'm going to stamp. And I'm going to be using Memento um, Tuxedo Black Ink today. I've got my little bits and pieces here that I've already started to get together. I'm also going to be using the two and a quarter um, punch, circle punch. So I'm gonna be using that for my circles, which I've already pre-punched. So let me get to and I'll do the stamping first. And the one thing I haven't quite decided on is the ribbon. So I've got out a whole heap of different ribbons that I was trying before and I thought I had decided which one. And then I remembered about the glimmery um, black one, which I thought would go with the zebras. Um, and I thought, oh, what about that one? Because it's really sparkly. So I've got that one up my sleeve as well. But this is the one I was going to use and I had pre-cut this already. Um, so we'll see. We'll have a little play with that when we get to that bit. All right, let's stamp our zebras first. So I'll just bring in a little piece of Whisper White. Now I'm going to be um, stamping my zebras and I'm going to um, fussy cut them today. So, oh, you and Pinterest don't get along very well, Megan. Okay, we need to have a... a um, a private chat about that perhaps I might be able to give you some tips because <laughs> I love Pinterest I find it fantastic so what do you find difficult with Pinterest Megan I am happy to have a, a chat with you later about that though too if you'd like to so because I'm um, I'm using Memento. Often with Memento, I like to take the ink pad to the stamp rather than taking the stamp to the ink pad because then I can actually see the stamped or the inked image as I'm doing it to see how my um, ink is laying down. Because sometimes too, if your, your pad is getting a little bit dry or something like that, you might not get a really good image straight away. Oh, how cute is that little zebra? Do you know what I was when I was designing the um, card for today? I kept on calling it a giraffe. <laughs> I do know my animals, really. I do. <laughs> I don't know why I said giraffe, but yes, it is a zebra, definitely a zebra. All right, so I'm just going to clean that little guy. I'm going to use the same block for my other zebras. So squeaky, squeaky. Sorry if you don't like the squeaky noise. I should give you fair warning, shouldn't I? So you can cover your ears when I'm going to do that. And then we'll get our next little zebra. And I'm going to turn my block. So you might notice with... So this is the D block. This is the one that was in the um, beginner brochure. And it's not quite square. It's actually rectangle, just slightly. So I'm going to turn it long ways this time for this little zebra because he's a little bit taller than the other one. I want to make sure that my stamp is within the edges of that um, block because if your stamp is hanging off over the block um, you won't be able to ink and stamp that portion of the stamp properly so always make sure that your block is uh, your stamp is fully on your block okay oh, I love these little guys they are so adorable there we go cute 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 Where's my scrap paper? I'll just use a bit of scrap paper to stamp him off first. Get all the excess ink off. I forgot to do that with the first one. And then I'll give him a clean. So I'm about to be squeaky. If anyone doesn't like the squeaks, close your ears or cover your ears. Okay, so Megan says, when I find a picture or something I like, I find it hard to get the details to see how it was made. Ah, Yes, so sometimes people don't always put the details on there of how it's made. Um, sometimes they might have a link to their blog though. So if they've got a link to their blog, that's always good. I always link all of mine to my blog. 
However, not all of my projects are on my blog because um, not every single project, I'm making so many projects, I don't have time to always put them on my blog. Um, but I do always link everything back to my blog, so at least that way people can know where to contact me if they want to contact me um, for anything to do with a project or for anything else, any help with anything. So usually if you look at a design um, closely, you can kind of work out um, what, you know, how they've put it together. Sometimes it will be difficult if you're looking for a specific product though, because sometimes it might be an old Pinterest post or Pinterest pin that, you know, there might be retired product or something like that. Then that makes it a little bit tricky, but um, yeah. Um, oh, hi Angie, how are you? <laughs> oh, did Megan give you a reminder? Thanks, Megan. All right. Um, so Jenny says she flicks the end of the stamp pad right of how can I put it back together again? I'm having problems with ink everywhere. Oh, okay. So when you're inking your stamp is that what you're talking about jenny you flick the end of your stamp pad how can you put it back together oh or your stamp pads come apart is that what you're saying your stamp pad has come apart if your stamp pad has come apart jenny let me know because if it's one that you have ordered from me um i might be able to help you with that we might need to speak privately about that so that i can work out exactly what the issue was when you ordered it and yeah, because if it's actually come apart, they shouldn't do that, and that's quite unusual. So if there's been a problem with an ink pad, we can certainly look at um, getting that sorted out for you. Oh, okay. All right. Um, after my live, Jenny, can you message me? Can you send me a private message, and um, and we'll get that sorted out for you. Okay? Yeah, because that's certainly no good if you're getting ink everywhere. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to fussy cut these little guys out now. Um... It might be why you can't find the details. Yes, Megan, it could be. If they don't have it linked back to their blog or they don't have that specific project on a blog because not everybody has a blog. There's a lot of people that have a, um, like a lot of people that use Pinterest and put their cards on Pinterest, but not all of them necessarily have a blog. So if they don't have a blog or they don't have somewhere to, um, you know, direct you back to, that can be a little bit challenging. But you can still always um, save the, the pin. Another thing you could do is if you've got that person's name from that Pinterest post, you could actually get in contact with them, try to get in contact with them privately. Um, I think on Pinterest now there is an option that you can send a message to people because I've had people send me a message a couple of times. So you might even like to get in contact with them to ask them um, for some details on their project. And they'd probably really love that. They'd probably love to give you those ideas. Um, yeah, so that's another option for you, Megan. All right, so I'm just fussy cutting these little guys, just leaving a little white border around the edges. I heard another demonstrator this morning referring to, referring to it as leaving a little cloud. I liked that terminology. Just leaving a little cloud around the outside of the image there. And that's so that we are not losing any of that stamped image um, because we've, if we cut right on the line, then we're going to lose that. Oh, I need my glasses. Hang on a minute. <laughs> I've been having so much trouble with my eyes and especially trying to do up close things. That's better. Um, whoops. I'm going to get my scissors back in there now. Yes, we don't want to be cutting right on the line because if we were doing that, we might lose some of that stamped image. So we want to cut just outside of that stamped line and leave that little, leave that little white edge around. There we go, Here's your little tail. Just cut off that excess to get that out of my way. And yes, you have to be very careful with their little tails because they're little tails are a little bit fine just there and 
and remember when you are cutting your images when you're fussy cutting your images try to keep your scissors it's first first tip is always use a um a pointed end like a sharp pointed end pair of scissors so small i like these ones because they're really small and they're easy to maneuver in my hand and see how i'm moving the cardstock rather than my scissors i'm just moving my blades of my scissors up and down very gently but i'm actually turning the um the cardstock itself to um to get that nice image there we go so there's that little guy or little girl very cute all right we'll quickly do these other two i'll just chop them out and that's the other thing too is when you are die cutting oh sorry not die cutting when you are fussy cutting if you just i'm keeping these little scraps because i might use them for my sentiment later um, if you start with a smaller piece around your image rather than trying to cut it out if i was trying to cut that image out of a full a4 size piece of cardstock that would be really awkward because you'd have all this additional cardstock you're trying to um, maneuver but if you just cut a smaller section of cardstock around the image that you're trying to fussy cut it makes it a awful lot easier for you all righty so up around the main these ones are pretty easy to um, cut out they're not too fiddly it's just mainly the most fiddly part is just around his tail or their tails i should say Now I am going to, just before I forget, I'll bring that in. I'm going to use um, the Light Smoky Slate Stampin' Blends just to add a little bit of tone in their stripes and their mane and their muzzle as well. So you can make your zebras um, fun. If you want to dress them up and make them party zebras, you might like to give them coloured stripes or something like that. I know real zebras don't have that, but hey, this is a stamped image. It's not a real zebra. So it can be any color you want it to be. And I remember when my daughter had her, um, she had a pony. She had a couple of parties actually when she was little with a party pony. And um, the first party pony was Pebbles and the next one was Comet. And we ended up becoming very good friends with the, um, the lady who had the party ponies and Brooke started doing riding lessons with her and we've stayed friends and now she's moved away but we go down to visit every so often down on her farm and ride her horses and stay on her property and we have a lot of fun with her but anyway um, yes so she had a party pony twice and when the pony came to the party she had beautiful well, he actually both of them were he's oh no pebbles was a girl that's right um, comet was a boy but um, yes, they had their manes all dressed up beautifully and they had colours in their manes. They had flowers in their manes. So, you know, you could you could even, oh, we could do that. We could put coloured flowers in their manes. Oh, that's a good idea. Now, I'm just trying to get into this last little bit of this one's tail. It's a bit trickier than the other because it's in a slightly different position. I don't want to break your tail, little one. There we go. I'm just, I'm just round that off a little. There we go. So that's that one. So we've got two. And then we've got this little one. They all, I reckon this little one, yeah, this little one looks really cheeky. This looks like a cheeky little zebra. So who loves fussy cutting? I know, I think it's Jenny Holcomb. I think you don't like fussy cutting, do you? Because I think I've asked this question before and you said you don't like fussy cutting. I'm pretty sure it was you who said that. Correct me if I'm wrong. So who else loves or doesn't love fussy cutting? So unfortunately, these little zebras do not come with coordinating dies. However, you could stamp them as I did in my other card onto a shape. So I use the circle, but we've got the squares, the ovals, the rectangles, 
Uh, we've got the labels. We've got all different sorts of shapes. You don't mind it, Sharon or Sam? So Sharon doesn't mind fussy cutting. I don't do as much fussy cutting these days as I used to. Back in the day, we used to fussy cut everything because we never used to have dies many years ago. So, oh, Amanda doesn't like fussy cutting. Oh, okay. I'll keep that in mind, Amanda. <laughs> Amanda doesn't like it. No, Jenny doesn't like it. Yeah, I remember when I asked last time, Jenny, you said you don't like fussy cutting. I'm, I'm wondering if I'm going to like it as much as I get older because I'm finding it getting more difficult with my eyes now. My eyes are not what they were. And of course, you know, now I'm 50. <laughs> everything just goes downhill from there, doesn't it? <laughs> well, not everything. With age comes wisdom, I'm told. So I hope that I'm wiser than I was, you know, in my 20s. I hope so. <laughs> So that's one good thing that comes with age. All right. I'm just trying to get that little bit out of there. I left a tiny little scrap in there in the tail. Let's get that out. Okay. And cut the little hooves. So, yeah. So if you don't like fussy cutting, you could certainly stamp these little zebras straight onto some shaped dies or shaped punches. Um, the one I used on Saturday was the two and a quarter inch punch and I just stamped directly onto to that one and that worked out okay. There we go. All right, so we've got our three little zebras. Which are all so cute. So, so cute. Okay, now I'm just going to add... Um, oh, you really hate it, do you, Diane? You hate fussy cutting. <laughs> it's great to see you here, by the way, Diane. Thanks for joining me. I'm just scrolling back to see any messages that I might have missed. Oh, you've heard people call it bubble cutting, Megan. Oh, I haven't heard that one, but that's a good one. Yes, because you're leaving that little bubble around the outside of them. Yep. Um, oh, it's usually fancy fold cards, Megan, is it, that you can't find the instructions for? Yes. That can be annoying if you can't find the instructions for the fancy folds because you need the measurements. And trying to work them out yourself sometimes is really complicated. I've had that happen. Um, oh, is that's a good question. Is there any reason that Stampin' Up! don't make dies for every set? That is a really good question, Tracy. Um, and I don't actually know the answer to that, to be honest. I guess... Um, I guess keeping the prices down... Or perhaps it could also be to do with um, if, you know, the dies could be, <clears throat> excuse me, if the dies can be used for other things so that they're more versatile. So a lot of our dies have other shapes in them. So even if they're shaped specifically for a stamp set, they usually will have other shapes in there as well that you can use for other things. <clears throat> excuse me, just to make the... Um, die set more versatile so you get getting more for your money sort of thing um but yeah i'm not sure if there's a specific reason why you um perhaps we could ask that question in one of the demonstrator um one of the demonstrator groups to see if there's actually a reason why that is a very good question i've never been asked that one before so there we go, and we'll give a little colour just on his little muzzle there. I noticed today, I was actually looking up um, colours and patterns of different zebras today on Google just to have a look to see, and I noticed that a lot of zebras have a little bit of brown in their tonings as well. And I thought, oh, will I or won't I add a little bit of brown toning in? But then um, I thought, oh, no, it's probably just... Uh, bringing in an extra additional color and we've already got a lot of color going on in this design today so I thought perhaps best not to but yeah and I don't know if the color the browning color is just because they're not you know totally clean if maybe they've got a bit of dirt on their on their um, fur or if it's actually in their skin color so that is does anybody know about colorations of zebras 
with that brown toning that they have, some of them. And then I saw one that was really, really like black, just black and white, like very white undertones. And I thought, oh, he looks like he's had a, had a wash. <laughs> so I wasn't sure if that was one that was in the wild or perhaps in um, a zoo or something that had been washed. Yeah, I seem to remember when I've seen zebras at the zoo, they've got a little bit of brown undertoning as well. But again, it could be just because they're a little bit dirty. Here we go. So yeah, just adding a little bit of grey highlight just to add a bit of tone in there to our little cute zebras. But of course, if you wanted to add some colour, in the beginner brochure, they've made their little zebras colour. They've made the stripes on them coloured. So they're like party zebras. There we go. All right, so that just adds just a little bit of something. Oh, hi, Athena, how are you? Oh, you're still at work, are you? Okay. Um, you find fussy cutting relaxing, Julie? Awesome, that's good. Oh, that's your problem with your eyes, Diane. That's why you don't like it. That's fair enough, yes. As I said, um, I'll see how I go as I get older if I still enjoy it as much. <laughs> Um, yeah, it could be too, um, cost and time, yeah, with the dyes, Diane, that's, that's a good, um, answer, yeah, um, some zebras are brown, Tina Marie says, yep, oh, and Tina Marie says, did you know that zebra's skin is actually striped, not the fur, ah, there you go, so are they, is their skin, black so is their fur black and white so they or the hair I guess it's hair really isn't it like on a horse it's actually hair not fur so we'll bring in our the rest of our um, products that we're using to make this card all right so I'll let you know what I have uh, the dimensions of what I've cut. We've got our three little cute zebras there. So I've just got a plain Whisper White card base. So this is half of an A4 um, piece of cardstock. So I have cut that at 14.85 um, centimeters and it's 21 centimeters wide. And then I have um, scored and folded that at 10 and a half. That's always um, the card base. Well, usually. Sometimes I cut it the other way to make a long card so that it opens in the opposite orientation. But predominantly, I tend to do mine this way. Then I have got a piece of... Now, let me remember which one it was. And I'll try and get my, <laughs> try and get my colours right today. The last couple of weeks, I've had a shocker with colours. It's Melon Mambo. Um... I have a circle in Magenta Madness, but my layer is Melon Mambo. And this is cut at, uh, so this is my matte piece. So this is cut at 14.45 centimetres by 10.1 centimetres. And that'll just give me a um, two millimetre border. So we can just see that white, the Whisper White two, with two millimetre border around it. Then my designer series paper, I have cut at 14.05 centimetres by 9.7. And again, that just gives us another two millimetre border. Then I've got three circles, which I've cut with our, let me close that for a moment, with our two and a quarter circle punch. And I have got three circles that I have punched with that in... Uh, Daffodil Delight, Magenta Madness, and Mango, Mango, Mango Melody. So they're going to be our three colours. All right, and then our ribbon is what we just need to decide on. So we'll get to that in a moment. All right, so let's pop that aside and we'll start with um, adhering our designer series paper onto our base. And I'm just going to use our new Stampin' Seal. So with the Stampin' Seal, it takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, so don't be worried if you can't get the knack of it straight away. Keep trying. Um, but different demonstrators have um, said they've had different experiences with it and different techniques with it. Um, 
I find sometimes you just need to advance the wheel a little bit just to get the sticky right at the tip of the wheel to get started. And then I just hold mine fairly straight up and go to the end. And then I either just give a little tick or another demonstrator said she gets to the end and then just flicks it back like that. So you're kind of rolling it back that way and that breaks the adhesive. So you can try both of those techniques to to get it, um, it's very sticky, I have to say. It seems to hold a lot better than the um, the snail that we had. Oops, oh, I didn't do that technique very well. See, I'm still getting the hang of it too. There we go. That broke off there, yeah. The Stamp and Seal Plus is a different consistency. So with the Stamp and Seal Plus, it's easy just to roll and lift up. Um, there's no actual technique that you need with that one. It's just the, um, the stamp and seal, um, not the plus. Yeah, but you get the hang of it. You just keep on practicing with it as I am because I only got mine, I think it was, was it last week? I just got it. Haven't had it very long anyway. So um, yeah, I'm still getting, getting the hang of it. All right, so that is going to be um, attached to the, the base. And then we're going to have our circles like this. We're going to have them overlap slightly. We need to have them fairly spaced out to fit all of our um, zebras on there. We're going to have that spaced out. And then I'm going to run a piece of ribbon down. Now, I was deciding as to which color ribbon. Actually, before I do that, let me... I want to place everything down first so I'm going to put some dimensionals onto the back of my little giraffes and just gonna see make sure that they're going to fit on to be sure where I am putting the um, dimensionals yep be sure that I'm not putting the dimensionals too close to the edges so that there's no dimensional hanging off the edge. All right, so we'll use our take your pick tool. And I'm just going to pop them in a little bit from the edges, but so that they're well supported. There we go. So three on that one. We'll turn these ones over. So I'll pop three down on this one as well and probably three of the larger ones on this one as well. So you can use either the large dimensionals or the smaller dimensionals. I might just pop actually one of the smaller dimensionals just here near his chest, because I feel like that might be a little saggy spot and I don't want any, might do the same on this one. Don't want any little saggy bits. There we go. So we've got a combination of our stamp, our mini Stampin' Dimensionals and our Stampin' Dimensionals there on our Zebras. Um, and I'm not going to take off the backing just yet because I'm going to um, adhere them down. I'm not adhere them down. I want to just position them in place first while I work out where I'm going to pop that ribbon or which ribbon I'm going to use actually. So there they're going to go down there. And I'm going to pop a little sentiment on here as well but I'll get all of this on first. That is going to be so cute. Aren't they going to be adorable? And then we've got to decide on the ribbon. So I was wondering how the black ribbon would go with the sparkles because the zebras are black and white. And I was wondering how that would look. And I could tie a bow or a knot there at the top up here. I want to put a bow. It's quite sparkly, isn't it? What do you think? Do you like that one? So this is where um, I'm asking for your input. So I do like that one with all the sparkles on it. And then we can add some rhinestones as well, which would tie in with the, the silver sparkles. But then we've also got the white, the metallic edged ribbon. So this is satin ribbon with a silver metallic edge. So that was the other one that I, that was the original one I was going to use. And then I remembered the black one and thought, oh, maybe the black one. So we could pop that down and I was just going to tie a knot on that one. Um, okay, so I'll show you all the other options, Megan. So I was going to do a, a bow knot 
up here. So I've got the metallic, the metallic edge with the Whisper White, or we've got the Daffodil Delight Ruched Ribbon, but I wasn't sure if that was too much yellow, and we're going yellow, and it's narrow, this one as well. I feel like that one's lost a little bit because we've got all the yellow behind it there as well. Or, so that's the third option. Or we've got Magenta Madness, which again, we're going pink under pink, onto pink. So I feel like that one is a little bit lost. However, we also have this wide white ribbon, which is from the, now let me remember which suite this one is from. This one is from the, is it Flowers for Every Season? No. Yeah, too much pink and not, yeah, that's what I was thinking with the yellow and the pink. I think you lose it too much. However, if you pop the white underneath it, I was wondering about that with either the pink or the yellow underneath it. It just helps to break it up a little bit. But then we're going pink on pink. I think that is still a bit too much. Flowers for every th season. Thank you, Sharon. Too much pink. All right. What about the yellow on the white? So I'm thinking either the black or the metal or the whisper white with metallic is going to be the one to go with. But I love to get everyone's input as well. So that's the yellow on the white. Um, oh, no worries, Tracy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you like the black, Megan? How about the gold trim? The Oh, Julie likes the black too. Tina likes the black. And Athena likes the black. Makes the zebras pop more. Okay, yeah. So we've got a few there with the, the black. All right, so let's go with the black then. We've got a few. Um, the gold one, I don't have out at the moment. Um, Sharon, it's up in my box. I would have to go and get it. <laughs> um, but it's uh, vanilla as well. It's very vanilla, whereas I've, I'm using white with everything else. So I'm not quite sure. Um, not quite sure how that would be. Or did you mean the white with the gold trim? Oh, you missed seeing the black one. Well, I think we've got lots of votes for black. We've got about five votes for black. So I think we'll go with the black. All right, we'll go with the black. Okay, let's move our little zebras off for the moment. And I'll wrap that around first before. So I'm going to cheat. I'm going to wrap this around, adhere it at the back, and then I'm going to do a little knot bow. All right, so I'll just wrap that around and I'll grab my glue dots because I like to use my glue dots for my ribbons and we'll adhere that at the back so I'll pop one on that end and one on the other end I won't need one for in the middle because oh that's gone right through because that's sheer ribbon <laughs> um, because that pink circle the magenta madness circle is going to be over the top of that so that will help to hold it down so i'm thinking in about there and then i'll just wrap that around and adhere that because i've already got that glue dot on the back there and i'm just using my eye to line that up i'm not even going to use my grid paper today i'm just using my eye and hope that i get it fairly straight let's see let's use the grid paper now and see how i did not too bad it's a little bit off at the bottom let's just wriggle it over a little bit it's a good thing about glue dots they are a little bit pliable so you can move them all right and then what I'm going to do so then that pink circle will go over the top of that I'm just going to thread a piece of let me just trim that I'm just going to thread an extra piece on there which is let me see how many centimeters is that it's 11 and a half centimeters I'm just going to um, put that underneath and then I'm just going to tie a knot like that now it just it's pulled the card up a little bit so I might need to 
release that slightly. So I don't know if you can see that it's pulling a little bit tight now on the back. So thankfully I haven't adhered that yet. So I can just release that glue dot a little bit. Oops, did tear a tiny bit, but that's okay. So I'll just release the tension on that a little bit. So we don't want it saggy. There we go. And I'll just adhere that back down. There we go. And then what I'll do is I will pop a little glue dot underneath there as well, just to hold that all down and so that that doesn't come, that bit doesn't come undone. And then I'll trim all of that up. But I want to position all of these first and then um, I'll do that part. All right, so um, these circles, the two and, a, two and a quarter inch, sorry, circles are going to fit like that. And then this one I'm going to pop up. So I'll just use a little bit of my stamp and seal on the back of each of those circles. And we'll just pop that down about there. So that's the, and the reason I've put the Melamambo, uh, no, not Melamambo, sorry, the, oh, what was it? Yes, it is Melamambo. Oh, see, I'm getting my colours mixed up. No, Mango Melody. You know why I keep getting those two mixed up? Because they're both MM, Mango Melody and, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Mango Melody is going at the top because I've got this patch of Mango Melody here at the bottom. Um, and so I don't want colour on colour for this project. And then we've got our Daffodil Delight down the bottom. And then this one I'm going to pop up on dimensionals. Okay, so we're going to use some of our regular size dimensionals, which are the larger ones. Whoops, jumped straight back off again. And I'll pop those ones down. Alrighty. And then, so I'm going to pop that over the ribbon and then overlapping these two circles just slightly as well. And we'll get that to adhere down. Now I'm just going to check, did that... Okay, so I need to put a little glue dot under there now because where I had put that um, dimensional is just sitting on top of the ribbon. I was hoping that it would straddle it and just go over a little bit to help hold it down, but I didn't line that up very well. So I'm just going to pop a little glue dot under there and hold that ribbon down. Okay, good. Now we can pop down our cute little zebras. So I want that one looking that way and that one looking over that way and this one here in the middle. So I've got to work out how to put them on there so that they're all going to fit. And they're actually going to fit quite well, which is good. I'll pop this little one on first, I think. They're just so super cute. So you could use these zebras for um, birthday cards. You could use them for, I think they could use them for um, children or adults. I don't think it necessarily has to be children, but it can also be used for baby cards. Um, oh, you like the black Sharon? Good, I'm glad you like the black ribbon. Yeah, so you can use it for um, all sorts of things. Anyone who likes animals, you could use it for that. Um, his little hooves can just overlap that circle a little bit. If you know anybody that works with animals or perhaps works at the zoo or something like that, they would love it. It's just really cute. Could even just use it for a friendship card. All right. There we go. So let's trim up our ribbon and then we're going to add our sentiment as well. I'll just trim that up just a tiny bit more so it's not right on him. And this little bit's going to just hang off the top of the card. And then I'm going to pop a glue dot just under that knot there, just so that that stays put and doesn't 
decide to go anywhere. There we go. Awesome. Cute. Now we've got to fit our little sentiment and we need we can attach that now to our card base. In fact, you could have, once I'd done the ribbon, I could have put that straight onto the card base. Um, but I do it different ways at different times. Sometimes I layer up all of the front first and then I put it on the card base. It's just that it's a little bit bumpy when you get to that point. But I do like to use my... Um, tear and tape to put my card fronts onto my card bases usually anyway so it doesn't matter that it's a little bit um oh i've got to get my tape scissors out it doesn't matter that it's a little bit um dimensionalized and bumpy already however if you wanted to use say the stamp and seal or even the stamp uh, if you want to use the stamp and seal or the stamp and seal plus you would need to do that before you started putting all the dimensions on the front because otherwise you can't easily run the tape runner um, over the back of the cardstock when it's already got all the other dimension on the front. It's just too bumpy. Well, you could tr give it a try, but I'm not sure how successful it would be. So I like having the option of the different adhesives. Just with tear and tape, you've got to be really careful when you stick it down because, and that's the same with the Stamp and Seal Plus, because if you, um, wherever you stick it down, is where it is staying. You um, have a hard time releasing that adhesive because it's so strong. There we go. And I'll just do that side and then I'll release the other two sides. I'm just taking that backing paper off my, oh, off my um, tear and tape. So I always like to do the top first and get that positioned, then I do the right side and then I do the other two sides together and that helps me to um, get that aligned. All right, good, so that is on our card front and now we need to finish off with our sentiment and our bling. So I think with our sentiment, I'm just wondering which one I wanted to use, kick up your heels, but I am going to see if it's going to fit first. I think it's going to, oh, it'll just fit. If I cut that very close, yeah, it's going to have to go down here. If I cut that very close, so I'm just going to stamp that onto um, Whisper White. So let me bring in my, my D block again that we used before. And I'll just, we do have smaller blocks as well, which are great for sentiments, but I'm just keeping with my D block because that is the one that I was talking about earlier. So I'm just lining that up and bring in one of those little scraps of cardstock. So when you're lining up your sentiment, um, if you are planning to just cut it straight, it's a good idea to start with one of the straight edges. So of course I wouldn't try and stamp it up here unless I was going to punch or die cut it out, then you could stamp it anywhere. Um, but always remember to use that straight edge to help you to line it up to get it straight. If you're planning to just cut it straight, which is what I'm planning to do because I don't have much room to play with. So there we go, great. And this is a really fun font. It's kind of like the zebra stripes. So it's not like a full solid, uh, I'm not sure if you can see there, it's not like a full solid um, font. It's like you've got these little spaces in the font that's kind of depictive of the zebra's stripes. All right, so then I'm just going to trim that down on my trimmer and I'm going to just use my eye to line that up and again that's another reason to have a straight edge so that you can line that up and I'll just hold that there oh I need to move my scoring blade out of the way there we go so that is nice and straight and then I'm just going to cut a straight edge on the other side And I'll just trim up this side too. 
Sorry, I think I'm cutting that off camera a little bit. There we go. So I'm just, I've just done a basic rectangle around my sentiment this time because we have very little room on there to play with this time. So on the one I did the other day, I used the new Lovely, what is it? Lovely Label Picker Punch. I think that's what it's called. I keep forgetting the name of that one. Um, all right, so then we're going to pop that here somewhere. So we might just find, actually it might fit up there, perhaps. I might mount that over. I might mount that over the, um, in fact, no, I won't. I was thinking I might even add another color underneath it, but I'm just thinking, will I, won't I? Let's see. I've got a scrap here of my uh, Mango Melody. Let me get the name right, Mango Melody. And if I popped that down there, how would that look? It's, it's keeping with the same color, or I could even use the color that I used in the background. Um, for that matte layer, which was, yes, that one there. Oh, that might be too much pink. Too close to the pink, yes. All right, let's 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 pop it down on this one. And you know what? I'm going to trim it with my paper snips. So I'll just pop that down with a little bit of tear and tape, just to give it a little bit more of a lift with an added colour behind it. Oops. If you wanted to just adhere it down as it is, um, that would be perfectly fine as well. But I'm just all about the colour today. I've been all about the colour for the last couple of weeks, actually. Doing everything very colourful. Alright, so I'm using that little corner and I just want just a little bit of colour. Just to lift it slightly. Oh, not sure that that's exactly straight, but that's okay. And because this is so small, you can just cut it with your paper snips. These paper snips are fantastic. They're really easy to use because they are a very short pointed blade. And um, they're, fan they're really fantastic. If, if you don't have a pair of paper snips, I highly recommend them. I've actually got two pairs going. These are my older ones that are a bit blunter. So I tend to use these ones more for um, my tape. And I just realized I picked them up to cut my cardstock, but that's okay. And then I've got another pair that I keep just for cutting ribbon and um, cardstock. All right, so then we've got that. And then we can just pop that up onto some mini dimensionals. But yes, paper snips, you'll find them in the annual catalogue under the tools section. So that's towards the back of your catalogue. Um, and I can't recommend them highly enough. And they stay sharp for quite a long time, actually. I use mine um, almost daily. And they I really only replace them about every six months or so. Which is, considering I'm doing all, the amount of cutting that I do, is pretty good. There we go. So now I've just got that straddling there, the ribbon. Gorgeous. And we'll get our bling. So I've got, oh, no worries, man. Uh, Megan, thank you so much. Thanks for joining me. It was great to see you here. If you want to chat more about Pinterest, feel free to send me a private message. Have a good week. All right. So then we have got, oh, look, we've got these gorgeous, um, fun, uh, in colour enamel dots, but then we've also got our uh, we've got our these I was going to use just our ordinary rhinestones because they go with the ribbon and that'll tie in. Yeah, I think I'll go with those because we already have a lot of colour going on, so I will tie in the bling with the ribbon as well. Blingy bling bling. Gotta have bling and ribbon on every card. Might just use, let's see. I'll just use some minis. Might put some minis here and there for a bit of fun. So 
some of these little so the um rhinestones they come in three different sizes on the um in the pack and so oh there we go there i think that's enough i think we've got enough going on because we've got the bling over here and then we've got this other bling happening over this side with our little minis yeah so in the pack you get so obviously this pack is nearly finished but uh, and this is an older pack you can see the older branding on this one um, this is the new current branding in in the black and white and you get them in the three colors so you get a lot of the really little mini ones you get two rows of the medium size one then two rows of the large ones and in total there's 140 on a sheet so they should keep you going for quite a while so there we go there's my cute little card i really love this one it is so cute so fun so colorful if you wanted to you could let me take these back off there she turned them up the other way um, there are little party hats in here as well you could always add a little party hat if you wanted to add a little party hat there's little stars you could add little stars on there instead of the rhinestones if you wanted to um but um yeah really really fun card i just thought if i leave the party hats off then it can be a card for anything if you add the party hats it's more kind of birthday i guess so i just thought that i would leave the party hats off i did think about it i considered it but then i thought oh no i'll leave them off <laughs> so remember the zany zebras um, again, I will remind you they are in the annual catalog as well as in the beginner brochure. And as I mentioned to you, I used all of the things that were on that page except for the watercolor pencils. And instead of the watercolor pencils, I used the, um, the designer series paper, which just as a reminder is the artistry, oops, paper's a bit plastic's a bit crinkled on there the artistry blooms designer series paper so you can swap it out with that one and then i just added the ribbon and bling um, but if you didn't want to add that you don't have to um, and i added the colored cardstock so that's up to you but you could put them onto white um, and just still mount these little giraffes up i used the punch as well of course but yeah but if you're interested in that one it's on page nine of the beginner brochure and you'll also find it in the annual catalog and remember the bonus days um coupons that you can earn so when you spend over 90 dollars, or for every 90 dollars that you spend up between now and up until the 3rd of august you'll get those coupon codes and then you can redeem those um from the 4th of august all right, so I will flip the camera up now so that I can say goodbye to you all. And um, I hope you really liked that little project. So just one moment and I'll cover up my camera. And we'll flip you up. Adjust my lights so that I'm not in the dark. There we go. Great. And I'll just take, I'll do my little, my little thing that I do. I always hold my card up and give a smile. And that's usually what I use for, because when I put my videos up on YouTube, then I've got a, a nice image that I can pop up there so people can see what the, the um, project is. And so I, I always like to make sure that I I have a nice photo to put there so people can see what we're making so i hope you really like that i think that's really really cute and that paper that designer series paper in the background is just so fun to play with and you've got all those colors going on that um yeah i hope you really liked that i had fun making it <laughs> so i hope you all have a fantastic week um i'm off on two weeks school holidays at the moment so that is great so if you have any questions um, or if there's anything that I can help you with, please let me know. Again, remember that if you join um, my team at the moment, you can order from the new, I can't find where I've put it, the upcoming mini catalog, the August, two, I have dumped everything on top of it now. I can't even find it. Oh, there it is. I found it. It was in my folder. Um, yes, we've got the, the upcoming um, 
August to December mini catalog. So if you're joining Stampin' Up! Um, at the moment, you can um, pop these products into your starter kit as well as the annual catalog products and the beginner brochure products. So whichever ones you choose, you can pop in to your starter kit, um, which I spoke about at the beginning. So if you missed that, feel free to watch the replay and watch the beginning part of the replay. I talked all about um, joining my team and remember our... Ooh, it's upside down our bonus days promotion that we have running at the moment so for every $90 that you purchase um, you will earn a $9 coupon code that's in Australian dollars um, you'll order a $9 coupon code that you can redeem for um, in next month in August so if you're spending $90 you will get um, one coupon code if you spend uh, $180 you will get two coupon codes so then you have $18 to spend um, or redeem in next month and that's when the new mini catalog will be available as well so you can even put it towards that if you'd like to so have a great week everyone I will stop talking I will let you all get on with your evening and um, I look forward to seeing you all again at the same time next week so until I see you again happy crafting everyone bye